Hello, I'm JW, and today we've got an old piece of equipment to have a look at, and it's this one here in this rather grubby case. Now this was obtained uh, very cheaply, it came from eBay and it had to cost one penny, with uh, postage of course to pay as well, so it went very cheap there, but uh, let's open it up and see what's inside. So this is it, and uh, so this only cost one penny plus postage. It was described as not working for, for parts, and that was basically uh, correct, as we'll see in a moment. And what it is, it's a mega meter, and it's got an ohm scale as well, so you just basically change on the scale here. So it's either the uh, top one, which is the ohms from 0 to uh, 200, and then the mega ohms on the bottom, which is from 0 to basically infinity, or at the end, or 100 mega ohms up that scale there. And uh, I'm not sure of the age of this thing, but it is actually a plastic case, so it's not uh, as old as some of the old uh, Bakelite ones. It comes in this rather filthy case here, so let's just take it out of there. This the case has some kind of fake uh, not really leather kind of stuff, with sort of a felty kind of interior. So uh, let's just uh, get rid of that. Now this one is uh, manufactured by FUSO or F-U-S-O Electric and for Atlas Electronics. Now so the front of this is all plastic and these buttons here are where you attach the wires in so basically you can press down the button and then it opens up the appropriate hole on the side. It did come with the looks like original test leads here and they've got these plugs there with a sort of retaining facility so essentially you can put the thing in there and then it's actually locked in position so seems reasonably good. Also got a uh, guard terminal there as well if you wanted to use that one. So only a single switch here just between mega ohms and ohms. The winding handle on the front here and it's also got this sort of metal uh, thing here for presumably carrying or whatever. It's also covered over the front there at the same time. Cosmetically it's not too bad, it is rather filthy and uh, Obviously it's had a certain amount of wear and tear, but it's not cracked or broken anywhere, so reasonably enough. Fairly yellowing here, that's usually where light has come in on the front, that's not generally covered, whereas the sides, of course, would be. And on the bottom here it does have the instructions there on this little panel, and I see the bottom there, made in Japan. Now this cover here looks suspiciously like a battery compartment, but of course it shouldn't be because it shouldn't actually have any batteries, it's purely a uh, turn the handle and generate the power variety. So uh, let's uh, have a closer look at that. Now the way these are supposed to work is that on the mega ohm scale here, turning the handle would generate about 500 volts and then it would show the appropriate uh, resistance here. Now with nothing connected it should go up to the infinity end there because basically there's no uh, thing attached at all, so basically as high as possible, but uh, if we set it there and actually turn the handle it doesn't, it basically sort of creeps along somewhere in the middle, so uh, definitely something wrong there. And on the ohm scale it should go to this end because it's sort of in the reverse direction, and again there's nothing connected so it should have basically greater than that. And you can see in that case that it does, so at least it's partially working. So obviously the mega ohms part is not. Now to check the output of this we can just connect it to another meter and see what sort of voltage we're actually getting from these terminals. So uh, just put the two leads that are supplied in there and then we'll just connect this other one up uh, onto the terminals there and also this uh, probe thing here. So we can get away from that. So we'll just uh, stick onto that one. These do look like the originals so presumably they are what was supplied originally. And we'll just select DC volts there because it's a DC output. And then we should get in the region of 500 or so when we turn the handle. So let's see. So we've got about 500 volts there, or sort of 450 or so. So at least the voltage generation part does seem to be working. But so this definitely isn't going uh, where you would expect now. This thing has a 10 mega ohm input impedance, so we should see this ideally around the 10 mega ohms mark, and that's actually up here, but as you can see it doesn't, it's just actually drifting down towards the lower end of the scale, and if we disconnect that it should go to the end. As you can see it doesn't do that either, so there's definitely something wrong with that. Now another thing we can do is just put it onto this low impedance input, this is 100k, 
and then if we turn this one it should go down to the 100k mark which is basically down here and as you see it does go that way but it goes way beyond the end of the scale so I think there's some kind of uh, issue there with the actual alignment of the scale so this seems to be working the voltage output seems to be working it just may be an issue with the adjustment hopefully there's something inside so let's get this thing opened up and we'll start off with this uh, cover on the back here let's see what we've got there now so it looks like a battery cover but uh, you wouldn't expect to find batteries in here because obviously it's all generated from the actual handle on the front so yeah as expected there's no batteries here it's just purely their case they must have used for certain other bits of equipment so nothing uh, too much to see there so let's go with these ones here. I notice there's a screw actually falling out of the uh, end there, so I should just someone may have been in it before. So let's take out the other screws here. In fact, that looks a bit loose as well. So so that's the four screws there. And they will appear to be the same length and the style, so that's good. And then we can hopefully open it and see what we've got contained within. Now, it appears that the knob is going to have to be removed, so a uh, little screw in the side there. We can just get in there and undo that. Yeah, that's it, just a basically round thing with a screw to lock it in place and the, uh, yeah, the spindle is actually round as well that's not uh, the best of arrangement so take this off and see what we've got so lid then is just plastic molding transparent window is a separate piece there and we've got a bit of a metal trim just underneath there at the front with the scale on it's very thin it's uh, some kind of metal anyhow Threaded inserts in the lid, so that's quite nice to see there, rather than just graunching into the plastic. Reasonably clean there. And then here's the actual thing itself. So you can see the gears at the front here, so basically you're turning the large one and it's increasing the rotational speed significantly for the generator at the bottom. Plastic gears, and then again, again this is not a uh, desperately old item. Switch there on the front, and uh, hopefully we can get this whole thing out of here. Yeah, just brass standoffs there with the hexagonal sides there and the uh, threaded hole in the top. Now these actually do go straight into the plastic, although it's not uh, really intended that this would of course be dismantled once it had been assembled initially, whereas of course it may be necessary to take the back off for maintenance or adjustment. So again, the case is pretty clean there, just two screws holding that metal piece on, but no cracks or other damage, so we'll get that uh, cleaned up and then we can reassemble that later. So here's the generator section, and uh, basically it's just going to be a rotating part here, causing a magnetic field of course, and then we've got the laminations there. Wires just coming off of that, and on this board here all we've got is a little capacitor, a resistor, which it looks to be 10k, and then a diode there just between this pin and the others there. And we've got three actual wires coming off of this, two directly from here, which go over to there, and then this third one going over to the switch. So bear in mind this has the two ranges, so that one's actually coming via that uh, resistor there as well. And this only goes in the one direction, so it drives this way, but won't actually go that way, and it's just simply a uh, spring-loaded ratchet type of thing on the back there. So it just clicks around one way and obviously drives in the other. So this does actually work just all the voltage comes out, but it is quite noisy. So some lubrication may be useful for that. And then this part here, we've all got the uh, actual meter movement in the top here, the two terminals for the test leads to go in there, just on those sort of spring-loaded things which we saw before. So on the back here, here's the uh, selector switch. Got a lot of wires going over to that. And again, another resistor across the top there. Two capacitors here on this uh, very small circuit board. 
And then presumably whatever else is just in the bottom of here, you can just about see another couple of components on that board there. Now there's no obvious uh, sort of broken connections or anything on there, and as you saw it did kind of work, it was just the scale was way off, so it presumably must be one of these components here. The capacitor is uh, not exactly an unlikely one, but we'll just check the components anyway, to see what's uh, what there. So resistance range here, this should be an 80k, so uh, just connect up there. Well that's showing a 79.2, so that's perfectly fine. And the one over the top there should be 5 mega ohms, so just connect to that one. Again, 4.97, again that's uh, perfectly fine. And let's just do these smaller ones here. So this one, uh, 30 ohms apparently. Of course these may be connected in series or parallel with the others, so we're not sure whether this will actually uh, do the job. So 300 that's showing. Not sure whether that was 300 or not. Yes, that's actually 300. And the other ones we should have 100k and 100k again. So let's just check those also. So 103, well that's uh, reasonably close. And then that one, sort of 104. So all the resistors there, certainly within the value you would expect. And to say nothing on the back of that. It's just purely the meter movement on there with the connections at the bottom and obviously there's tracks between the various other parts. So we'll just, just leave the uh, board we've got over here. Now I've got this other resistor here which is a 10k. Now it appears to be in parallel with that capacitor which is a 47 microfarad. So what kind of results we're going to get here is anybody's guess. But let's just uh, go in there anyway. Well, this ratio is about 4.3k, which uh, does seem on the low side, but uh, it's obviously in parallel with the capacitor and it may be connected over to the other stuff as well. So that's certainly not uh, desperately conclusive. Now, other than the problem with the actual movement itself, there's not really much else to be wrong here. So I think we'll just lift off one end of the uh, capacitor and resistor there and just check those values. So that's the resistor liberated from there, and um, we can now just check on that uh, value, which says uh, should be 10k according to the side of it. I wouldn't expect this to be particularly wrong, because resistors are normally pretty reliable. So, yep, 10k exactly, well, 0.07 or whatever, that's uh, not even worth noting. Let's check that diode as well, I can just use the old uh, diode check function there. Now it's still in line with that capacitor, which may not be ideal, but... So 0.5 volts uh, drop there, that doesn't seem too outrageous for a diode. And we'll just check on the other polarity there, and it should be basically open, which is confirmed it is. So the yep, diode is fine, so it really just comes down to that capacitor. So we'll just connect in there on the capacitor there, and on the other end in there. So it's coming to 57 microfarads at 0.16, which uh, is a bit on the high side as it's supposed to be a 47. So there's nothing obvious uh, inside which was uh, massively out of its actual value. Now there were a couple of diodes on the back panel with those green, which presumably are capacitors. Tested those as well, the diodes are just fine. The uh, green things don't actually have any markings on them at all, so it's unclear as to what sort of value they should be. Um, if they are capacitors, they're in the nanofarad sort of range, so yeah, not particularly clear what they are, as there's say, no markings on either side. Anyway, put the thing back together. It still works just as it did before, so no change there really. And one thing I've noticed, if you actually hold it vertically, it does seem to work slightly better. And it's not the fact that the needle is stuck, because say, it does... Uh, move perfectly freely of its own accord, so I presume it's something to do with, say, the magnet's lost its power or something. But uh, if we stick it on the mega range with it open, and it sort of floats around over there. Mega ohms with the shorted end, which basically should be zero. It does sort of go in the general direction, although it's only going down to about 100k, which is obviously not uh, quite what you would expect. And on the ohms range, 
again with it still uh, shorted it should basically go to zero which is up that end which it sort of kind of does and then if it's uh, open of course it should go to the other end which it does so uh, say fairly inconclusive as to what the problem is I presume it must be the movement itself because say the power's there and it's moving from one end to the other in the sort of general area but uh, obviously not in line with the scale so that's it for this time and uh, given this was only a penny I'm not going to spend any um, huge amount of time trying to get the thing repaired it uh, wasn't bought for using obviously it was just bought for a uh, old or vintage type item so until next time thanks for watching <laughs>